My name is Justin Webb. I'm your host for the day. That, I know, right from the word go, is a disappointment. Uh, and I'm sorry about that. Sorry not to be Evan Davis. Um, look, I mean, frankly speaking, there's not much I can do about it. I know it's a hitch. Um, um, I admire, actually, the organizers um, of this event who have um, replaced uh, an interesting, gay, state-educated, I think, uh, young, talented, handsome chap with, um, I mean, given that the subject today is diversity, with a white, male, middle class, public school educated, <laughs> slight crick in the back uh, uh, chap. Um, and I know you're all really thinking, I'd love to see him in paisley pajamas. Uh, <laughs> In fact, some of you have written to me to, to ask that, and we could perhaps talk later. Um, but anyway, that's not going to happen. Um, I, I know, though, that you're basically suggesting that you have a look at me and think, hmm, seriously? Uh, that's really what the day is about. And I'm perfectly happy to, to be that role model for you, if you like, to stand here and for you to think, no, no, we can do better, which is really, um, uh, I think, the conclusion you're going to make by the time you get to the end of it. Um, e Evan, you know, in all seriousness, is a great friend of mine, um, is, is a wonderful guy, and I know he's done great work for you in, in previous sessions. Um, he and I actually do have something in common, in that we both um, uh, are under 70, and on the Today program, that, <laughs> makes, us, uh, that makes us quite, uh, quite the kids, uh, dangerously youthful, and, um, and we have seen the Today program, both of us done it for about five years, but we've seen the Today program move and grapple in a way that I think part of today is about you grappling with this business of, of how organizations and, um, and endeavors uh, survive and prosper in the digital age um, and, and, and in particular in the age of social media and the kind of the ways in which people's uh, activity is different but also the ways in which people's thinking uh, is different. And on the Today program, it's been quite a a challenge for us. It was really brought home to me. In fact, Evan was there when this happened. I don't know if anyone remembers the occasion where Jim Nocte um, uh, uh, introduced the then culture secretary, Jeremy Hunt, as the culture secretary, Jeremy, and, and yeah. <laughs> but we did it at 10 to 8, which is the maximum audience time, about 4 million people listening. And um, uh, it, it raised a few eyebrows, put it mildly, inside the studio. And the editor of the program then, went into the studio during the 8 o'clock news and said to Jim, look, Jim, we've obviously got a problem. You've just called a cabinet minister. Uh, uh, and and um, we're going to have to... What we'll do is we'll just say sorry. We'll say, I uh, apologise if, if you uh, heard that earlier on. It was a, a slip of the tongue. There we go. And Jim turned to the editor of the programme and said, I don't think anyone will have noticed. <laughs> and now, here's the thing. I, I think in the, I, I could sort of see what Jim meant, because in the olden days, in other words, maybe five years ago, um, I, of course, they would have noticed. They would have talked about it. And in a meeting like this, people would have said, uh, did you hear what Jim Nocte called Jeremy Hunt this morning? But after that, it sort of would have dissipated, would have gone away. Um, in, in an age of social media, it certainly didn't go away. There was an echo chamber immediately. Everyone was talking about it. It was trending on Twitter, etc. And that, that notion that something uh, can be ignored, from our point of view, um, is hugely important. But also, of course, from your point of view, that the, the idea of the echo chamber, the sense that something can take um, hold in people's imaginations and that you can plant the seed that takes hold, albeit in that case it wasn't a seed I don't think Jim terribly wanted to plant. Um, but it did, and it, and, it, and it really kind of went somewhere. Um, on the other hand, we're also grappling with that kind of sense of whether we over-serve social media, over-serve the digitally literate. Um, uh, uh, there are still other people, other people who spend money um, in, in your world, other people who are consumers of news and current affairs in my world. And my friend Jeremy Vine tells, I think, quite a cautionary tale of the first day he presented Newsnight when he, he did as a young man, it was a few years ago now, and he, 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 he thought he was okay, and um, it was a big deal for him. And he got home and he Googled himself, which of course is always a mistake to do uh, in broadcasting. 
And, and the first site that he got to said, what did you think of Jeremy Vine on Newsnight today? Did you think he was A, uh, a tosser, B, a complete tosser, or C, a gargantuan tosser? <laughs> and Jeremy thought, oh my God, what do I do about that? So he thought, being a BBC man, he thought, well, I tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll go for, for B, a great tosser, because I'll sort of, I, I try and bring people down from gargantuan and kind of introduce an, an element of doubt in their, in their mind. So, so he voted and uh, left it at that. And the next morning he logged in and the um, site came up and he looked at the voting patterns and one person had voted. <laughs> and it was him! <laughs> so this... Whoever it was, his kid in his mum's sitting room somewhere had managed to inveigle Jeremy Vine into being the only person who had taken part in this thing about whether... And he had voted for himself as a, as a great tosser. Uh, so, you know, there, there, are, there, are, there are issues there as well in, in, in terms of how far you go down the road of, of thinking that social media and the digitally literate are everything and everyone in the modern world, because plainly they're not. And the other area of diversity that I would say I had some... I'm not exactly personal expertise in, but I was for eight years the BBC's North America editor, and, and as quite a few of you work in America a lot, and I think some of you even are Americans, you will know better than I do that w the, the big, big story, if you like, of America in the last few years, and it's a story that goes on for the next 20 or 30 years, is demographic change, and the staggering, staggering um, uh, difference that there is going to be in who an American is who your average American is um, in, in years to come. And the days when, I mean, particularly as a, an English person, kind of speaking as I do, you'd go to America, and, and I don't know, particularly if you get off in, in Washington or New York or somewhere, and you get on a smaller plane, you go to one of the flyover states, and you get out in, in normal Illinois or, or Wichita, Kansas or somewhere, and you go to Starbucks, because there will be a Starbucks and it'll be open, and you, you say, hello, I just arrived from London. Could I have a cappuccino and a muffin, please? And, oh, my gosh, could you say that again? It's just so... <laughs> You're so gorgeous. Uh, uh, you know, I, I spent, frankly, most of my eight years in America basically impersonating Hugh Grant. Uh, <laughs> uh, not in every respect. I mean, <laughs> uh, but um, the fact is that that's th those days are over, and those people are dying, uh, literally and metaphorically. And on my last day in the White House, it really brought home to me, I went to see a senior White House person um, it's all off the record, but I mean, you would recognize this person, certainly if you covered it, if you were interested in American politics. And I said to him, why did you choose as the first action of the Obama presidency to chuck the uh, bust of Winston Churchill that was in the Bush Oval Office, to chuck it out? Um, why did you do that, given that we're your oldest ally and all the rest of it? And he said, <laughs> he said, oh, he said, you're mad. He said, we thought it was Eisenhower. He said, he said, one elderly white guy looks much like another to us, frankly. And that, you know, he was only half joking. Uh, and, and that kind of, that sort of sense of change, real deep change in who a nation is, has been enormously important in America. It's something the Republican Party there is, is in an existential struggle over. Uh, the Democrats at the moment are on the right side. They've got that coalition pretty much wrapped up. Um, but the Republicans certainly haven't. And there's no reason why they shouldn't. Uh, in many respects, they can appeal to many of these people, but it's finding out how to appeal to them. It's having the faces on the podium who appeal. It's having the policies on the podium uh, that appeal. And it's having the tone that appeals. And in a sense, I think that's sort of what you're going to be getting to um, later in the day as well, albeit that you're not necessarily natural Republicans. Uh, probably. Uh, anyway, so um, that's pretty much enough for me. I, I've seen the brief for today, and it's impressive, and you've got a, a scale of debate um, in the industry um, uh, in thinking through the issues confronting you and um, in working out how to adapt, uh, to use that word, to ad address them. I was talking to, to Ian Priest earlier, and he reassured me that he had been saving the best for last, the T. Um, well, talent, um, uh, it's a people business, so the mix, the quality of the people is going to be pretty fundamental, isn't it, to, to business performance, to client agency relationships, you all know that. Uh, and that, of course, is what today is about. Focus on talent. Um, focus on the strategies that you as an industry are going to have to adopt to support businesses, to secure the incoming, the retention of, uh, of the talent you need. Uh, the T and ADAPT could, of course, have, have stood for other things as well. 
um, not tosser, Jeremy Vine, but, but technology, um, because attracting the right talent in that space is, um, is, is notoriously difficult. Um, upskilling uh, is a challenge as well, particularly if you're over 25. Um, could have talked about teamwork as well, getting people from different persuasion, different, different uh, backgrounds to collaborate is also very important. But anyway, T for Talent won the day. It is the most uh, inclusive. The others can be subsumed in it. So what are we going to do today? Um, you've all got the programmes. You can see they're pretty packed, but they follow a uh, similar pattern to those that have preceded them. Uh, provocation, inspiration, exploration, experimentation, series of platforms and panels here um, in the morning, three parallel uh, workshops, adapt labs then in the afternoon. Uh, and me as continuity, introductions, the odd Q&A and, and making sure that people have an opportunity to ask questions from uh, the floor. <laughs>